Hey traders and investors in the cannabis space, it's time to check in on the charts again. We had a decent bounce this week and some sentiment shifting in the market a bit, but there's some things that the bulls have to do to prove to us. We're going to look at the U.S. cannabis space, Canadian names, the psychedelic sector with a quick check-in, and then I'll go over how I am personally trading the space and how I am positioned. Before we get to the charts, we got a free ebook with a link in the description and in the comments of this video, and it's aptly themed patience in trading, which is certainly required in this sector. And we go over some examples and some tips on how to remain patient. Some nice information. Check it out. All right. So we'll look at the broader market. We're going to look at Canada, U.S., psychedelics, and then we'll go over my positioning. So IWM is my gauge for this sector. As far as the broader market is concerned, this is the growth sector ETF. And we know that cannabis has been correlating more so with this ETF than other ETFs. And for me, this rep represents risk on versus risk off in the broader market. And we've certainly been in a risk-off environment for about four months at this point. That being said, in the reaction to the FOMC this week, we've had a very notable shift in momentum the last few trading days. So I'm looking at this range and I can say IWM has been trading within this range for two months. If we do not break 209.05, we remain within a tightening range. If we break that level, that tells me that anybody that's been short this sector in the last two months is now underwater. So it's a very notable resistance test for me. If we consolidate from here, we've got a lot of space to form a daily high or low. And if I'm a bull in the cannabis space, I want to see confidence everywhere in the market. Because again, generally speaking, if market participants are scared to go long Apple and Amazon and all these major behemoths, then they're going to be scared to go long the highest risk, highest reward sectors. So you see confidence get established in our stronger, bigger picture names first, and then it trickles out. Confidence is contagious, just like fear, and it trickles out into our laggard sectors. And we can certainly look at the cannabis space as being a laggard sector, just incomplete bear control for such a prolonged period of time. So I'm watching this range closely, keeping in mind that even if we do break bull, we do have to prepare for a scenario where we bounce and get follow through, but anything under the all time high is a monthly lower high. The worst case scenario for the broader market would be confirming monthly downtrends. And just real quick, QQQ, which is a lot of tech. We know tech's real important. QQQ has not confirmed a monthly downtrend with a lower high and lower low since 2008. So that would be worst case scenario for the broader market if QQQ bounces and then confirms a monthly downtrend. Bigger picture, that's your huge red flag if that happens. So keeping an eye on that and knowing that the cannabis sector will definitely be negatively impacted if the broader market were to see continued weakness from here. If we're going to see a bottom in the cannabis space that does not have, that is not due to a significant news catalyst, the broader market has to bottom. So there's a lot of proving to be done in the broader market. And again, I put out these videos on a daily basis going over the broader market. Sometimes I cover briefly the cannabis sector but it's certainly info, information that is still applicable to the cannabis sector as a whole. So now Canadian MJ name, CGC, big old bounce off the lows. Great. But we've seen bigger bounces and we've seen more follow through in the past. The key for me is the weekly time frame at this point. And the last bounce that we saw is the last time that I was positioned with some decent sized bull positions. I'll talk about that at the end of the video, but it was a solid bounce just into a weekly lower high. So on this current bounce, there's a number of things. As you know, I keep talking about trend changes. We haven't confirmed a daily trend change yet. We're coming straight off the low. When we lose the hourly uptrend, we look for a daily higher low and higher high. Can bulls confirm a daily trend change to keep this move going with follow through? If we do not confirm a daily trend change, this bounce means nothing to me. Let's just say we do. We top out to start this week. We set a higher low midweek and then into next week, we confirm a daily trend change. Great. Now we zoom out and we remind ourselves that if we do not break 961, bulls don't prove a thing. It's just another weekly lower high in the long, prolonged downtrend. And we've been setting weekly lower highs ever since we topped out over a year ago. So if the pattern is going to continue, the weekly lower highs will continue, which is why it'll be very notable to me the first time that changes. I'm looking for changes in the market environment and there aren't many in this sector at this point. The broader market showed me a few this past week that helped me go bullish the broader market, 
but knowing that the bigger picture is what has to shift in the cannabis sector, it's going to take a while for these signs to try and show up. So daily trend change is baby step number one. If we do not change the daily trend, then it's not even worth saying the word bull. Cron is the same deal. These were just some falling wedges, which had some nice bull breaks, some nice follow through. Falling wedges show us bear exhaustion, where you get bear breaks that lack follow through into the bull move. Need the daily trend change, zoom out. Anything under 413 is just a lower high. ACB, same deal. Daily trend change needed. It's nice when the technical analysis, everything's so correlated that you can just say the same thing for everybody. But ACB, anything under 490 is just a lower high. So we can compare individual names as well. For example, CGC, if we're going to break weekly resistance up at 961, we need another 19%. Cron, how much do we need to break 413? We need maybe 16%. ACB, how much do we need? And I can measure, you know, I'm just doing rough math here. How much do we need to break weekly resistance? 36%. So I can say that ACB is further away from weekly resistance than its peers, which means it has more work to do. The probability of a weekly lower high is much higher on ACB than it is on CRON. There are other ways to compare names. I can look at a chart that says CRON divided by ACB. And what this chart shows me, the fact that it's in an uptrend, this tell me, tells me that CRON is significantly outperforming ACB since January 11th. We, nothing was changing here and then a notable shift. So that tells me a number of things. Number one, if I'm bearish, I want to be bearish ACB over Cron. Number two, if I'm bullish, doesn't mean we're going up because this can just show us the sector dropping, but ACB, and this is what it is showing us, the sector was dropping, ACB was dropping faster than Cron. So if I have to have bullish positions in the sector, it's better to be in Cron than ACB if this chart is in an uptrend. So that's one way that I use comparisons to know correlations, essentially. I would say that ACB has a bearish correlation comparative to Cron. TLRY, daily trend change needed, weekly perspective, anything under 748 is just a lower high. That's a long ways away. That is 35% plus, similar to ACB. So if we're just doing a brief comparison, I would have Cron and CGC over here as slightly stronger and TLRY and ACB over here as weaker. And VFF forgot that. So VFF weekly resistance is much closer in play. Last weekly lower high, we got 556 and 574. Less than 10% to break multiple weekly lower high resistances. Daily trend change is already confirmed. Very notable difference here comparative to the peers. So every name that we just looked at dropped to a lower low here and is now bouncing whereas VFF held support and confirmed a daily trend change. So if I have to choose a Canadian name, I would say VFF is definitely positioned better than the other four that we just looked at. On to USMJ, IIPR. And there's definitely some headlines to be aware of. And the number one shifter of sentiment is price. But you oftentimes see those headlines start to shift as well as the price starts to shift and as the, and the market environment starts to shift. So we got New Jersey, New York headlines that we're keeping an eye on, always keeping an eye on anything federally speaking as far as banking, nothing on the short-term horizon, but a couple little headlines that can get some attention. I think there was a headline that came out this week talking about, oh, I forget which state it was, but somebody looking towards legalization in 2022. And again, we have that dangling carrot. I know that there will be a bullish market environment. I can't speak to the, the broader market. I have no idea what the broader market is going to be doing in November, but I know that there will be bullish headlines and, and sentiment in this sector as we head into the end of the summer and early fall. And the question is, is the broader market going to enhance that bullish setup as far as headlines are and the media are concerned, or is it going to hurt it? So we'll have to be paying attention to that as well. But again, it's a dangling carrot. We know it's there. And I know that I'm going to be looking to make some money as a bull in this sector as we approach the votes with states. We're going to have multiple states very likely confirming or voting, approving the recreational and of course some medical as well. So IIPR onto the US side of things. IIPR has already made a notable bull break and 204.75 broke, not much follow through, but again, that puts two months worth of bears underwater. You can see we just started slowly 
losing some bear momentum and it was an equilibrium. We had our low, low, high of the bounce, higher low, lower high, held support, break resistance. So a little bit of a shift underway. I'm watching these EMAs. This is the 12 and 26 EMA. We failed a bull cross back here. We're attempting the first bull cross since all time highs. That being said, IIPR is another name that has tons of space for a monthly lower high. And I use my retracement sizes on bounces and pullbacks to help us gauge what is the most likely scenario. And I do so by pressing Alt F. So here, this was a monthly bull flag because the retracement size was less than 382%. That favors continuation. So I'm looking at this bounce now from the high to the low of the pullback. And I can say that if we do not get over the 382 retracement, it favors a monthly bear flag. If the bounce gets follow through to 50% retracement plus, that then starts creating the space for a potential equilibrium. But we know that there's a ton of space here. We can bounce another 20% and still just be looking for a monthly lower high. So the biggest bear scenario, as I laid out with QQQ, would be a head and shoulders here where we set a monthly lower high and confirm a monthly downtrend. So again, I need to know all scenarios. What is best case bull scenario? What is best case bear scenario? I want to know what all different sides of the argument, the market argument, are thinking. And that would be best case bear scenario, monthly confirmed downtrend. So we have short-term bull momentum, a nice bounce on the weekly. <clears throat> if this monthly bounces to see follow through, we will need a weekly trend change. So wherever this move tops out, higher low and higher high will be needed. If we fail to confirm a weekly trend change, it increases probabilities that it's a monthly bear flag. If we do confirm an eventual weekly trend change, that's when that bounce starts to get some significant retracement size to create space to hold the recent lows next time we consolidate. So again, this is definitely a bit more advanced technical analysis. And if this is all over your head, if you want to stick with it, we've got the free intro course. We've got 7,000 videos on YouTube. And again, can't stress enough how many times people message me and say, for five months I've been watching, it didn't make any sense. It's all finally clicking. And even if you're not a trader, full-time, whatever, it can help make sense of where we stand when you can identify trends and identify scenarios that are most bullish or most bearish. I wanna know what a red flag is for the bulls. I wanna know what a red flag is for the bears. GRWG is close to the first weekly trend change since July. That would be notable. So this is what every cannabis name wants to see. A weekly bounce, it was just a lower high. We pulled back and held support. Everybody else that we just looked at dropped to a lower low on the weekly. GRWG did not. You can say, well, it was more beat up on the way down, and that may be the case, but it's establishing a weekly trend change setup. Key support 705 must hold as the higher low, and we're testing resistance here, and if 971 breaks, it is a weekly trend change confirmed. We then zoom out, and we scout a monthly lower high with tons of space for it to form. This is a stair-step pattern. I got a video on YouTube for that. Actually, officially not a stair-step pattern. Stair-step pattern is when you set a lower high every single candle, and that broke there. But look at the shift. Inside bar, bull break, monthly bounces underway if we clear 971. Again, tons of space for a monthly lower high. We do the same thing. What is our retracement size? Is it a monthly bounce that favors a bear flag into another leg down? Is it a monthly bounce that is significant enough to try and shape up a monthly trend change? But I can say that GRWG, on the verge of putting two months of shorts underwater with its weekly trend change attempt here, is more developed in terms of its shift in momentum than many other names. And again, same thing, EMA 12 and 26 attempting a bull cross here. It failed back here. It's trying, failed another one. It's trying for the first one in six months. Onto the MSOs. So MSOS, solid bounce. It's doing the same thing as IWM in the last four days, but we got a ton of work to do because we know that anything under 2563 is just a weekly lower high. Again, we can bounce 20% further from here and still just be looking for a weekly lower high to be the result of this bounce. And that's what helped us get overly bullish last bounce. I had a bunch of bull positions last bounce. It was the most bullish exposure that I have had 
in many months. But I knew that if we did not break 2651, it's just a monthly lower high. So my style of trading, I am always selling into a counter trend move. Not all of it. I'll sell partial and try to hold some. And a lot of people don't do that because they think, well, what if this is the bottom and then I sell some? I would much rather sell some when it's the bottom to have a comfortable break-even position. And then if it keeps running, I'll average up. When I have that confidence, I'll buy higher. And my go-to that I always go back on is Bitcoin after the COVID dump. Shouldn't have said that word because the YouTube algos don't like it. After that dump, we bounced 250%. I didn't get any of that bounce. I saw an equilibrium. I saw a clear trade setup. I bought the bull break. 250% off the low, and it then went 500% higher from there. So again, there's if it's the move that we're looking for, there's no FOMO. There's plenty of opportunity to add higher. If I've got a good low and I'm playing protective and I sell some and it keeps going up, as long as the bulls prove to me that a longer term shift is indeed underway, I will happily average up. So that's my mindset, and it's been protecting me on these moves down. I'll take some small losses for sure. I've definitely gotten more small losses than small wins attempting a couple positions here. Really, these are the these are where I attempted my bull positions, the big bounces that just didn't have any follow through. So then I stop out. I'm doing the exact same thing right now. We'll talk about it at the end of this video. So we need the daily trend change for the bulls as step one. If you change the daily trend, great. We'll zoom out. We'll scout anything under 2563 as a weekly lower high. And the bulls are hoping that it's a big enough bounce that we can watch for an inverse head and shoulders trend change setup, but we're not there yet. Not even thinking about it. Again, the word bull is not even really in my vocabulary here until a daily trend change at a minimum. So that is step one. Individual names, TCNNF. Right now I put CRLBF as a lead bull. Why? Because look at its low, 516 from January, and we held it. That's very notable. That's a base of support now, and we haven't hit a fresh low price in almost two months. Every other name that we're going to look at dropped to a clear fresh low. So this is CRLBF with a weekly higher low now set. So similar to GRWG, not not nearly as close to changing its weekly trend, but it at least held support. The Bulls played defense, where on every other individual name, they failed to play defense. Anything under 818 is just a weekly lower high, but there's support to be working off of here. We've got earnings coming up in a couple of weeks in the sector, and so we're going to be watching that closely as well. have to double check all those dates. I haven't even thought to check in yet, but as far as this bull move, again, we got a little base of support, and if this bounce is going to see follow through, daily higher lows and higher highs need to keep coming. But for me, the weekly lower high pattern is the most important pattern in the sector, so 818 is key. But CRLBF is standing out. TCNNF, there's your fresh, clear lower low. We broke to a lower low by 8% or something like that. It's not just a break by 1% or 2%. It's a notable break. So here we are with a bounce underway. But again, we haven't proven a thing. Change the daily trend. Then we'll zoom out and scout a weekly lower high, anything under 2727. And again, it was just a perfect rejection from resistance. We rejected by 1%. There's a double top there, 2744, 2727. Anything under 2727 is just a weekly lower high. When's the last time we've seen a significant weekly trend change in this sector? TCNNF did it once here on its earnings reaction, but most individual names did not do it. So I'm watching for the the sector wide to do it. We don't want just one name to stand out as strong. We want the entire sector to be doing the same thing. We want the entire sector to be shaping up a weekly trend change. GTBIF, that volume, in my opinion, has to do with quad witching, and it's settled after hours. You can see 3.5 million shares at 18.5. So, doesn't mean a whole lot to me. Fresh, clear, lower, low, 10% plus. So I need to see a weekly trend change set up. Anything under 2246 is just a weekly lower high. We've seen plenty of big weekly bounces. Again, this is where I've established positions and been stopped out. We're looking for the time that's different, and we don't have one yet. Watching for it to shape up. C-U-R-L-F, again, the weekly lower low was very clear. This was probably the most follow-through out of anybody, 
and they have the bearish overhang with the Russia ties and all that drama on social media. Whether or not it's true, whether or not it matters, it clearly mattered for the price. So it's important to be paying attention to that, to the different narratives because it, it had an impact on the stock without a doubt. So anything under 928 is a weekly lower high. We can go 40% from here and just be looking for that lower high. This is why when you're, when you're in a trend on long-term timeframes, it takes a lot to change it. It's gonna take a lot of time to change a weekly trend. We need to bounce for a couple more weeks. We need to pull back for a week or two. We need to see continuation for a week or two. So you're talking a month plus before we can confirm any kind of weekly trend change here. And there's a lot of proving to be done by the bulls in the meantime. VRNOF, all-time lows after the clear base of support broke. It was just a beautiful equilibrium with great plays off support every time, but finally they failed. And now we're bouncing. And the weekly here is just so clear. Every bounce is a weekly lower high. So on the current bounce, if we do not break 1310, nothing changes. We did reject, we had previous support right around $10 previously, and we bounced and rejected from it. Previous support acting as resistance, but we did finally get over it. So nice end of the week, nice bull momentum, but we can go 20% further and just set a weekly lower high. So that's the USMJ space. Earnings are gonna be a factor. If it's a bullish reaction to earnings, we will then have space for a weekly high or low attempt to try and form once the move tops out. If it's a bearish earnings reaction, our weekly lower highs will be set. It's all about the weekly, the most important time frame for me now that it's just becoming so clear with so many lower highs every time we bounce. Big bounces, but just lower highs. 50% bounce, 30%, 40%, but just giving it back. Psychedelic sector. This, These names, at least some of them, MNMD looks more like GRWG in the sense that we did not break the lows from January. We're setting a weekly higher low and a weekly trend change is attempting to shape up. So some of these names are stronger than cannabis names. So we're looking for the weekly higher low is now 91 cents. This is the most important support level for me. And we must break 148. If we do, the weekly trend change confirms to the bulls for the first time in eight months or so. But again, when you're in a long-term downtrend, we will just zoom out and scout a monthly lower high. We won't be in full-on bull euphoria mode in this sector. Again, unless it's a massive FOMO headline, it's going to have to take a monthly, weekly, and daily uptrend. That's when we saw all our big gains in psychedelic and cannabis names, when we had uptrends on all those time frames. And now we aren't in downtrends on all those time frames, and it takes a lot to shift the momentum. ATAI, same weekly deal. Higher low is set at 481. The bulls must break 632 to confirm the weekly trend change. But we did not drop to a lower low. It is a weekly support attempt. And CMPS is a bit weaker. It's holding a recent low, but we must get over 1490. Then we zoom out, scout a monthly lower high to be the result of that bounce. We need a big enough bounce, retracement size, measure it to change the monthly trend from there. It's a long road ahead. It'll happen eventually. It's just patiently waiting as far as I'm concerned. So again, I still have the mindset where I'm going to make a bunch of money in the U.S. cannabis sector. I have no doubt of that. I know the headlines and the FOMO are coming. I just don't know when. It could be years. And I will patiently wait because I plan on making multiple years worth of gains when that opportunity shapes up. And I know a lot of people that maybe have not gone through this, these many cycles are saying, oh yeah, right, it's never gonna shift because it feels like forever that we've been weak. But again, I've, I mean, over the last 11 years, the amount of times that I've gone through these cycles, I sat through an 85% drop in Bitcoin and the crypto space that then turned around to all time highs. And I did not give up on that sector. Like I said, it, it took a 250% bull move for me to say, okay, I'm paying attention now. But then it was, years worth of gains on the follow through that resulted from that. So there will be massive opportunity. And the key in this market environment is preserving capital until the timing is right. And I know that's tricky and hard to do. And I know a lot of people have a bunch of bags in this sector right now. So we learn from those lessons and apply them to future opportunities to ensure we don't make the same mistakes 
but that is how I'm approaching this sector. So I stopped out of all of my bullish positions from the last time I was making videos and the last time we were seeing a big time bounce. Again, we bounced 25% plus, significant move. Always selling partial positions into strength because what that ensures is worst case scenario, I'm gonna take a small loss. And I can take 15 small losses attempting positions in this sector and when the shift takes place, it'll take two weeks to make all that back at most. And oftentimes I'm just stopping out break even. And right now I have a break even scenario. So last videos, I was in MSOS. I had a cure leaf position. I had a VRNOF position. Might have had green thumb, not sure. Probably just MNMD. I think I had those four. And in the end, it was probably a small loss as far as the total trades between my entries, selling some into strength, and then getting stopped out on fresh lows. I don't have the exact math because it doesn't matter to me if it's a small win or a small loss. In the end, it's the same. It's a non-event and back to all cash. Now I've entered some positions. So what I did is I recognized I got bullish the broader market before the sector. So I recognized a, a setup for the bulls heading into the FOMC. And again, if you go back and watch this previous week's broader market videos, look at the video from Wednesday and Thursday, and it was pretty much me shifting my sentiment to being a bull. So I grabbed a Facebook long position. I grabbed a Tesla long position. And it got to the point where I laid out, this is exactly what I want to see on the FOMC reaction for broader market bulls. And it played out. And as soon as that played out, I jumped into the cannabis sector, looking for it to be a laggard and looking for it to benefit from a shift in market sentiment. So at this point in time, what I did is I, I grabbed a position on Wednesday, I think, 1887 on MSOS. And again, at that point in time, it looked to be chasing a little bit. And it was Wednesday and it was right here. So here's my entry into the end of the day. I said, okay, market bulls are showing me what I wanna see. It's worth taking a stab. Worst case scenario, I'll stop out with an acceptable loss. So I'm in that entry and we get two days of follow through. I sold some, we had previous stubborn resistance, 1967, 1950, 1955, kept standing out. And we did reject from that level again, initially Thursday morning. And that was enough for me to take half a position off. So entered at 887, sold half at 950, 1950, 18 and 19. So what does that mean? That means my break even is now 1824. So you can look at this and say, oh, I sold too early. I could have had more profit. Sure, but I'm in a trade where I cannot lose because my stop is going to be break even, 1827 or 18, what was it, 24? Whatever, low 18s. Because if we drop back down to this level, well, why don't I just put my stop under 1767? I could, and it would be a small loss if I stop out. But if we retrace all the way back down to the lows, that's a red flag for me. If this move is going to have follow through, we're not going to retrace to 1824 and we're going to see continuation with a confirmed daily trend change. So I'm in a scenario right now with a half position size where I cannot lose unless there was a massive gap down, which is very unlikely, always a possibility, 0.5% possible. But two things are going to happen. I'm going to stop out and not lose a dollar and then just patiently wait for the next similar setup where I can get very low risk or... This is the bottom, and again, there's, we'll call that a 8% chance right now, but if this were the bottom, I would have my half position, I would be up extremely nicely in it and extremely comfortably, and I would buy the next weekly consolidation to average up. Don't care about averaging up at all. If the momentum shift and if the market environment dictates it, I will average up every time. It's adding to a winner as opposed to adding to a loser. And again, this is a great sector where that's a lesson, adding to a loser and compounding losses versus adding to a winner to increase gains when you're in an uptrend with momentum at your back is a night and day difference. So I only have MSOS right now. I'm not heading into other individual names because this is only a small portion of my game plan right now. Like I said, I've got other long positions. I got plenty of long exposure and I'm looking for daily consolidation in the broader market here Monday or Tuesday. So watching very closely for that as well. So I know I'm going to have to sit through daily consolidation and a confirmed trend change or I'm going to stop out. And that's how I'm approaching the sector right now. And that's how I've been approaching it every time. Sell some into the strength, 
stop out if we give it all back. So I have stopped out multiple times. This one and this one are the two notable times. Maybe it'll be a third time. But again, I will keep making these attempts using shorter term time frames to sell partial positions and get risk free. And again, I did the exact same thing in Facebook. I bought Facebook the same time I bought MSOS, Thursday, no, Wednesday afternoon. I bought it in the 119s. I sold half in the 222s. 219s, 222s. My break even, no, 119. What? Let's try that again. 199s, sold half, 202s. So my break even is now in the 196s. And I can't lose on this trade. I got a break even stop. If we come down and hit that level, I'll stop out. I'll probably take some more profit from the current swing position that I have. But again, that's my style. If I'm trading counter trend, I will always take some profit into a bull move to ensure that if the long trend, the, the long term trend continues, I'm not losing money. All right. Feel free to ask any questions. A lot of proving to do for the bulls. Broader market sentiment needs to continue to shift. We know worst case scenario for the broader market is a confirmed monthly downtrend on QQQ or SPY or other major ETFs. So we're watching for that, even if this bounce does follow through for another couple of weeks. And we'll continue to check in. Appreciate you checking in. Do good things.